behind them and said, I'm the eye and tooth and tooth, but I tell you, do not resist the evil kid. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, tell them to hit the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take you sooner, let them have their cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with them too. I made out with Jesus, but I'm not gay. <laughs> and like, you know, like messages like that, and I hear a cornerstone, and like all this other stuff. And like, what's great about your band is just like, we just want everybody to fall in love with Jesus because I have a man crush on Jesus, but I'm not gay. You know, and it's the truth. And like, so many kids don't understand that, and you bring that to the forefront, Whoa. which is awesome. And what I want to go into next is you have had a man do guest vocals on your last two records which is the most miraculous thing in hardcore and pissed off the devil so much and just spit in his face a man named Bruce from 100 Demons and what has happened with that relationship with you and him and the rest of the guys like like he sang on Sleeping Giant and then he always sung on Descending Into Hell and I remember you talking about um, at a strong arm sh or stronghold show in Cali when I went to, and you're like, he sings on this record and it's super pissed. This and I listened awesome. to that rec, I listened to that song today, and I was thinking about it, and I'm like, yeah, he does sound super pissed, but at the same time, he sounds like a super pissed, like I'm crying out to God, like why is this happening? Yeah. And like, legit. and that man, like, can you just give like a brief description, like two minutes or three minutes of what? And that man has done in hardcore and like your like your your, your story about like coming in contact with him and your heart for him because yeah. it's a very awesome story for me and for everybody yeah, else and good, I want man. everybody to know about no it's you know the thing I when I was first getting to know Jesus at all um, he used this band from Connecticut um, that that is not they're not a Christian man at all and the band was called 100 demons and the, the, the record um, was called, well, the song was called Forsaken. It was like this huge, it was, um, he was not a Christian dude. And his, he was so angry. There was such passionate distrust and anger and, and hatred towards uh, religion and towards God on that record. And I put it in when I first started getting to know Jesus. And I started it. And the, um, the words to the first song were like, you know who I, you know who I love? Uh, nobody, you know who I trust, nobody, you know who I fear, nobody. I prayed a thousand times, he never answered me. And it started, and I remember thinking in my mind, in my like Christian world, kind of like, maybe I should take this out. And I felt like God said, leave it in and listen to him. And I went, okay. And so I listened to the CD, and there was this consistent, like, God, I'm trying, where are you? You don't exist, obviously, because I'm in pain, and you don't care. And, and I listened to the record and I was just in tears by the end of it because I felt like God communicated to me his heart for this man. And I started praying for him. And this right when I first started coming back to the Lord um, in any way, when I first started even being awakened to the possibility that he could be real. Um, so fast forward like four years later and we're, we're in Sleeping Giant. And I mean, I've been praying for this dude in the back of my mind going, if you've prayed a thousand times, you've prayed more than me. You got a hunger and a passion to see God. Basically, I went to Bible study that night and told the leaders, I hear him. He's so close to God and he doesn't realize it. And that's when they told me that I heard from the Lord. And they're like, "That's that you have God's heart for people that other people don't have God's heart for. And so they were kind of a correlation to who I am in the Lord. Where it's like, I see God sometimes where he isn't. Um, and that, oh, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. We can take a break anytime you like, man. Oh, you're good. So anyway, so fast forward a little while. So we're Sleeping Giant. He had left the band, and they, they recorded another record that's phenomenal, but he didn't sing on it. So um, all of a sudden, we get a call, and we're playing shows in California, and we get a word that says, hey, uh, you know, 100 Demons is playing a show with their original singer. Do you want to play? And I freaking lost my mind. I was like, yes, because I've wanted to see him. My mind was that day, I, I wanted to go to their show, back when he was in the band and I wanted to dance and wreck as many people as I could and not back off for a second and then I wanted to go to him and tell him I'm a Christian and I'm I'm not ashamed of my God and if you really were looking for him you are going to find him and that was like in my heart I wanted to say that to him and then he quit the band and I was like dang it so yeah, we, so we played a show with Honor Demons to Showcase 
And um, we started, and I, I saw him, but I didn't know if it was him. And I was under the impression that if I walked up to him and talked to him, especially about God, because I'm not like a big, I'm not as I'm an evangelist, I think, but I'm not like a let me get up in your crap. I just don't, I don't do that well. Um, I, I, I like relationships more than I, I don't know. Anyways, so I just watched him and I was like, that is him. I've been praying for this dude for like, since I became a Christian, oh my God. And so we, we played our set and we're on stage and I have, the, there's a film of it, the narrow, we open with the narrow road and it's on YouTube. And, and I'm, I remember it because on the video, it's like, dun, 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 and I'm like, this whole set goes out to 100 demons. And then we started playing and I was so amped because we're playing with these dudes and I, they were one of my like, favorite bands. So anyways, so uh, we get done and uh, we play our whole set, man. I, I'm sharing stuff. I'm talking about everything. And we get uh, we get finished and uh, I, he walks up to me and he's got like tears in his eyes and he's like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? And I'm like, yeah. And I, and I knew, I knew that God had done something or was doing something. And so I walked outside with him and this is what he said. He said that a friend of his had he had basically gotten a friend of his hooked on drugs and his friend had overdosed and his the, his friend's funeral was the day before he's across the country and he's like I don't know what to do and he showed me his hand and there, he had this tattoo on his hand this black and gray work and just said grace um, and he said if it wasn't for the grace of God I wouldn't be here right now and I realized that he had become a Christian for real and so he's crying. I'm like, dude, I've been praying for you for so long. Like, just, oh my gosh, I don't know. So anyway, so I met him then. And I brought him upstairs and my wife, uh, Chrissy, just began to encourage and speak life over him in the Lord and just try to bless him and build him up. And uh, it was awesome because I was like, I got to have one of those stories of I've been praying for you because I, I was such a little craphead when I was little. Um, and hated God. My family was like religious that I had those stories. Grandma's coming up to me. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you. And I was like, I don't care. And so to have one of those myself was awesome. So I developed a relationship with Bruce and I asked him if he would, if he would record when we did our first CD. And he was like, he was like, yeah. So he went with Zeus and, and recorded um, on our first CD and um, just became someone that I could call and he calls me every once in a while. We'll check in with one another and we just kind of help him out, build him up. And um, he's been tour managing bands and out on the road, so I get to see him when he comes to Utah. And, um, so there's just been relationships since then, just kind of like a cool sort of like, hey man, I love you, I back you, I'm grateful of what God's done in your life. And he came out of heroin addiction. He was a fighter. He was a <laughs> mean guy. You know, part of the Connecticut hardcore scene, which is just a, it's an awesome and a rough place to be, and was throughout the whole. Gosh, man, it's just, it's just a rough spot. He was one of the dudes, and so he's been through how itself, and um, God delivered him out of it. And so his testimony is phenomenal. Um, he's one of those dudes that, he's one of those stories where people would say, you know, if he, if he would become a Christian, if he could be a Christian, anyone can. You know, if God, if God could save him, God could save anyone. And it, God loves him. God loves people just like him, so that's not an issue. But anyway, so we had him sing on this next record, too. And... Uh, He's just a friend, so he was happy to do it. So, anyways, that's Bruce. And speaking of guest vocals, there was a guest vocalist that didn't happen that not many people know about, which is Mitch from Suicide, Suicide Silence. Silence. And I want to. My question is, what song and what line did you have in mind for him to sing on? Well, we have a song called Confessions, and uh, on the new record, and it is. <laughs> it's based in, in Ezekiel and in Isaiah. Um, and it's a song about a taunt that the people of God will, will raise up when they see the ruler of Babylon. <laughs> On that day, it says the people of God will take up a taunt and they'll say, is this it? Like, this is the one? This is our opposition. And, and then in Isaiah, anyways, there's different like themes where it says this. 